We continue our study of the Treasar, of the 12 quote-unquote minor prophets. Today, we will study the book of Ovadia. Before we begin the book of Ovadia, there's a great question as to who is Ovadia. It's unclear. There are two main opinions, I would say. Um, one places Ovadia, um, based on the Midrash and others, really, places Ovadia as a character during the time of Elio Hanavi, back in Melachim uh, Aleph, probably about Parak Chafal of Chafet, something around that sort. We are introduced to an Ovadja who confronts Eliyahu. He works for uh, Achav. He's part of the part of the uh, king's retinue, but he also is known as a righteous individual who hides hundred prophets in a cave during the time period that Izevel, the wicked wife of uh, Achav, the queen of the northern kingdom, is killing uh, is killing um, prophets, purging them. So there are those who say uh, that Ovadja is this Ovadja. They're the same people. Midrash likes to do that, likes to place, uh, doesn't like a person to not be unknown. So there's an Ovaji, here's an Ovaji, the same guy. Others say that, no, 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 based on his language and based on his prophecy and based on some of the things that he says, Ovaji in our book is a completely different character. And he's somebody who is a contemporary of Yirmiyahu. Okay, so just two basic time periods. One places him uh, in the middle of the uh, first temple period. And the other one places him towards the end of the first temple period. Let's look at the text. So, Pasagal, Chazon Ovadja, Ko Amar Adonai Elohim Le'edom, Shmua Shamanu Meita Adonai, V'tzir Bagoyim, Shulach Kumu V'nakuma Aleha B'Melchama. So this is the prophet of Ovadja. We have received news from God. A messenger has been sent out amongst the nation. Let us rise against her for battle. This is what God says concerning Edom. So his prophecy is going to be to Edom, Edom, presumably the descendants of Esav, Esav he Edom, Esav is Edom, Edomites, the red, Esav is ruddy, is red, and so it seems to be who this is referring to. I will make you least amongst the nations, you shall be most despoiled. Of course, we know Esav, Yaakov, Yaakov the younger son, Esav the older son, who's going to be the one who is in charge, is it the younger son, is it the older son? So here, Edom is being told that they are going to be considered the younger son. He's going to be the katon. Zidon libcha hisi echa shochne bechagve sela marom shivto omer belibo mio redeni arets. You have such arrogance, you who dwell in the rock and your lofty abode. You think in your heart, who can pull me down to earth? So many of the things that we've seen in the later prophets, of course, have been questions of questions of people who are. Um, arrogant that's been a major a major uh, issue and here too that's saying what part of the issue is of edom we saw it with sidon with sor we saw it with a lot of the nations and this is a place where it has a similarity to to Yirmiyo, because in the 49th chapter of the book of Yirmiyo, Yirmiyo says as well zidon libecha shochnei bechagge sela so he uses a lot of the same words there and thus based upon the same words the same language the idea that he's a contemporary of Yirmiyahu. continuing pasuk dalim tagbia kanesher should you nest as high as an eagle, right? Should your should your um your eerie be lodged amongst the stars? I will bring you down from there, says God. excuse me, im botrim halo yashiru if thieves come to you, if, if right criminals, marauders come at night, they would steal more, more than they needed. If they come to you, surely let them have some gleanings, how utterly you are destroyed. How thoroughly, how, how ransacked, how destroyed Esav is going to be. Esav is going to be completely destroyed by uh, these people. They're going to be Right, ransacked. You think you're so great. You think you're going to be able to control everybody around you. That's not what's going to happen. You are going to. Um, they're going to. Right. They're going to run after you, and they are going to cause you uh, great defeat. Continue in verse seven. Pasuk zayin ad hagvul shilchucha kol anshei vritecha isiyucha yachulucha anshei shlomecha lach mecha yasibu mazor tachtecha ain tfuna bo. All of your allies. Turn their backs to you at the at the right at the uh, at the, the at the war. Your own uh, your own again allies, the people who you have a brit with, who you have a covenant with, who you're together with, have duped you. They've tricked you. 
They've eaten your bread, but they've planted traps under you. But Esav, I should say Edom, doesn't understand this. He has no Tvuna, he has no Bina, he has no, he has no uh, understanding about what really is going on. On that day, God says, I will make the wise vanish from Edom and any understanding will disappear from the mountain of Esav. Your warriors will, the, their hearts will melt and no one from Esav's mountain will will survive the killing, the destruction, the slaughter. Okay, so here we know uh, many of the prophets gave terrible prophecies of what was going to happen to Bnei Israel. Here the terrible prophecy that's coming is not coming to Bnei Israel, it's coming to Edom. They're the ones, this mighty uh, army, they're going to be destroyed. Nobody is going to survive. <laughs> For the outrage of your brother Yaakov, Disgrace will come over you, will cover you, and you will perish. You will be cut off from everything. And presumably what this refers to is the violence of uh, Edom versus uh, versus Yaakov. And specifically, we haven't gotten there yet, but we've sort of referenced it. I think it's the 138th chapter of the book of Tehillim, the, the, the chapter of Al Naharot Bavel, where it talks about how Rim Livnei Adom Aru Aru Esav, they, the descendants, his descendants, Edom, are going to be cheering, glorious, as Bnei Israel are going in their, uh, if you want to call it a, a march of tears after the destruction of Beit HaMikdash, on their way to the rivers of Babylon where they're crying. And so, the, so right, the Edomites are, are rejoicing in that. They, uh, th they will be defeated because of this. On the day when you stand alone by yourself, when foreigners carry uh, carry off your goods and strangers enter your gates and they cast lots for Jerusalem, you were as one of them, right? You should have come to aid B'nai Israel. You should have helped them. But instead, what were you? You were one of the attackers who came to destroy Jerusalem, the, uh, which is, of course, we know this, uh, not necessarily with Jerusalem, but we know that that is in many ways the story of Jewish history. It's not just one nation. Uh, you know, you're going to get the Jews. We'll go with you together. How could you look joyously? On the day that your right that your brother is defeated, on the day of his destruction, how could you gloat over the people of Yehuda on that day of ruin? How could you loudly uh, jeer and and uh, and and lift up your mouth? Not here in sorrow, not here in mourning, but in in joy, on the day of sorrow for your brother and for your enemy, seemingly as well. Right reference, we can think about that verse in. Uh, into Tehillim. How could you enter the gate of my people on the day of its disaster, gazing with glee on its misfortune, on its disaster, and lay hands on its wealth on its day of disaster? So Edom here again, right? Taking advantage of things. He's coming in. The enemies are attacking. He's joining the enemy. He's taking the, instead of defending B'nai Israel, instead of Esau coming back and defending his, his, his brother, their cousins, their descendants, what he's doing is he's coming in and he is taking advantage on this day of disaster to, to uh, take whatever loot he can. How could you stand? There, right? You're, you're standing there watching and you're cutting down the fugitives. How could you betray those who fled on the day of anguish? Finally, they managed to get out there. They're running away. They've, they've managed to survive. And what's going to happen? You're going to be there ready to strike them down. Is it because you hate them? Is it because you want to take their possessions? It doesn't matter. Here you have a, a, a weak people, a destroyed people who are, who are, running for their lives, and rather than helping and assisting, you are more than happy to cause more destruction. 
Or in verse 15, Ki karov yom Adonai al-kol ha-goyin. Hashar asiti ya'ei aseh lach, yimulcha yashuv b'roshecha. This is right, the, the measure for measure, mida kenegen mida. This is the Tanakh's idea of a karma, right? The day of God is coming. And when that day of God is coming, it's close. What you did to others will be done to you. Your behavior will right boomerang back at you. Ki asher, ki ka asher shtitem al har kachi, yishtu kol agoyim tamid v'shatu v'la'u v'hayu, kilo hayu. And the same way that you drank from my cup on the holy mountain, right? You drank, you lapped it up, you rejoiced. You took my stuff. You took the stuff of B'nai Yisrael. Just like that happened, all the nations will continually drink. They will drink until they talk the whole day. And it's as if you have been completely forgotten. They've erased your memory. They've destroyed you so much. They've lapped you up completely that you will not have anything. But in Sion, as opposed to your mountain, Har Esav and Har Sion, Yerushalayim, the Har Habayit, however we want to put it, there will be a remnant that will survive, the Haya Kodesh, and it will be a holy one, a sacred one, by Yershu Beit Yaakov at Mora Shehem. And the house of Jacob will dispossess those who dispossess them. Right? They'll get rid of the enemies. They'll come back, whether it's the second Beit HaMikdash, whether it's the, you know, the state of Israel, whether it's the future redemption. B'nai Yisrael, you will be destroyed. You will be forgotten. Nobody will know Edom. The only reason they know Edom is for the Tanakh. Nobody knows the Edomites. It talks about the Edomites, the Jews, fortunately and unfortunately. Israel, in the news every single day, we will be here and we will reconquer. And of course, in this chapter, we have so much of use of the word Yaakov here, because of course, Yaakov and Esav, Esav, Yedo. But here we go beyond that. Vahia Beit Yaakov in verse 18, Eish, Uvet Yosef Lehava, Uvet Yosav Lakash, Vildalkuva Hem Viachun, Vlo Yasarid, Levet Esav, Kiadonai Diber. The house of Jacob will be fire, and the house of Yosef will be a flame, and the house of Esav will be a straw. And they will burn it and devour it, and no survivor shall be left of the house of Esau, for God has spoken. A little earlier, we talked about the Beit Yehuda. Here we talk about the Beit, uh, right? It's Yosef. Yosef, who's the northern kingdom, who's being destroyed, right? Even Yosef, even those nations that have been, that have been uh, exiled, the northern kingdom, are going to come back and are going to be uh, destroying um destroying Esau. Some of the commentaries talk about how, again, Edom is, is, is considered by Christianity and Rome, and um, that that uh, even the house of, of, of Yaakov, even there are those who say, right, the sort of the people of Ephraim, we talked a lot in the last books about Ephraim, the northern kingdom, it's going to be uh, it's it's going to be destroyed in B'nai Israel, the, those members of the ten tribes are going to be scattered everywhere. Even they will come back in the help of the defeat of this enemy of Edom. We're in verse 19, V'yar Shuh HaNegev et Har Esav v'ashvelat plishtim, V'yar Shuh et Stei Ephraim, V'yat Stei Shomron, U'vinyamin et HaGilad. And these people, when they come back, the Beit Yaakov, the Beit Yosef, Beit Yudah, they will possess the Negev and Mount Esav and the Shvela and, and uh, the Gaza area, and they'll possess the, 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 the hills of Ephraim and the Shomron and Binyamin, along with the Gilad, V'galut Heichel Hazel of Nei Yisrael, Asher Kananim Atzorfat V'galut Yerushalayim Asher B'sfarad, Yerushu et Arei Hagnekev, and the exiled force of Israel, which belongs to the Venetians, while the Jerusalem exile community, as far as Sarfat and the exile community, the Jerusalem exile, as far as Sfarad, shall possess the towns of the Negev. Let me just make a point here. We know, of course, Sarfat means France and Sfarad means Spain. That's not what it means here. These are places in uh, Sarfat, uh, um, is not far from, from Tzor and Sidon, from Tyre, and uh, Sfarad is a little bit north of uh, of that so these are not the, the countries how these countries got these names is uh, I, I don't remember we have to check the etymology as to how those names came about for these two countries but that it doesn't mean that the galut of, of Yerushalayim or the galut of the of the uh, 10 tribes was all the way to uh, Spain and to France uh, at this time verse that we know the final verse of the book of uh, Ovaja and the the Moshiim, the saviors, the liberators will march up to Hartzio, and there they will pass judgment on the on Har Esav and dominion 
will be gods. Right. This is the this is the the statement that um, the defeat of Edom, the defeat of Esav, the defeat of Har Esav, its destruction, which we can lend together. You can say put it together in a sense with the destruction of uh, of Amalek, the destruction of evil is what will allow for um, God's uh, glory to be demonstrate we saw this back and then this is a, a known thing right until all of the enemies are defeated a Beit HaMikdash could not be built until B'nai Yisrael is fully secure until it's the time of Shlomo with the great success and the peace then it's time to build a temple so God's uh, glory will not be shown until the defeat of Esav is it just Esav is it Edom does it mean Amalek does it mean evil in general those things are all good questions. We don't know the full answers to, but Ovadia offers this prophecy. And when we think about it, what's the purpose of this book? It's about Edom and it's the destruction of Edom, but we've seen this in other books. We see this in Yechezkel. We saw this with many of the other uh, prophets of uh, Nevi Machronen who offer prophecies uh, about the destruction of B'nai Yisrael's uh, enemies, specifically even Edom, even though Edom is not Babel, they're not Babylon, they're not Assyria, the nations that really destroy B'nai Yisrael, the, the Syrians who exile the ten tribes, Babel, who go and, and of course destroy the Beit HaMikdash, and exile the, the, the people of Yehuda with the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, Edom represents um, an enemy of B'nai Yisrael, represents somebody who mocks them, somebody who takes advantage of them. And thus, it's supposed to uh, provide a great sense of hope to our people that these enemies will be taken care of and that we will return to our glory.